gonna start on the E, which okay. is here and here. Yeah. You so you, much for teaching me. You are the most talented student I've ever had <laughs> because I don't teach. No, okay. <laughs> so you're my you're first really, student. Oh, really? So, yes. Thank you. Baby. You're a very good teacher. Yeah, oh. thank you so much. <laughs> Halo pemirsa, sekarang bersama saya Alifia Malik dan juga George Haliano di Sapa Indonesia pagi akhir pekan dan kita akan ngobrol-ngobrol juga dengan George sekalian juga uh, main piano. Okay, uh, George, uh, I want to know uh, how come uh, when did you start? learning the piano perhaps oh. can you run me by before uh, is it truly your interest from the start or do you have your parents um, kind of introduce you to it uh, walk me through that i've played piano for a very long time mm -hmm. uh, since i well I, my mother first started trying to teach me some uh, nursery rhymes and mm -hmm. some like, easy songs because my mother's a uh, as a self-taught pianist, she mm -hmm. she loves piano, she loves uh, Richard Claytons music, and she likes some other sort of pop piano, mm -hmm. but she can't read notes and she never had a formal teacher, so she used to teach me uh, some tunes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, at the start it wasn't like... I don't think any seven-year-old is going to say, ah, oh, I'm going to have a career as a concert pianist. Well, mm -hmm. some were, yeah. but it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love piano a lot and I was I enjoyed it a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I got quite good at it, um, but it wasn't until I was, I think, 13 years old when I decided that this is what I really want to do as a career. Because when I was 13, I left school, um, and when you leave school, it's quite a big decision to make. Uh, I left school to focus full-time on piano. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going okay so far. Is it, is it truly a, a hard decision, decision for you to leave and then to pursue piano full-time? Because, as you said before, it's a a 13 year old leaves school to completely immerse themselves in piano is it yeah. like a hard decision for you it's a not a hard decision but a strange decision i don't think many people are in my position so it's difficult to find guidance it's not like it's not like when you become a lawyer you have to go to school until you're 18 you go to this university yeah. you take this exam becoming a musician it's much this it's a much broader path. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it, or a lot of ways you can go about it. Um, but for me, and actually I've been, always been very lucky to have the support of my family to give me advice, give me guidance, and we both agreed that um, I couldn't continue at the school I was at, definitely, because the school I was at was a very academic school. It mm. was like one of the top ten in the country for mm. exam results. Mm. And in order to attend a school, you have to get really good exam results. You have to attend all the classes, get really good results in the practice exams oh. and at that time I was traveling a lot for competitions I was traveling a lot for concerts um, it was not possible it was not well, it was not practical for mm. me to continue to do this while trying to pursue piano and I think that if I did continue to see that I would have just become a mediocre pianist yeah. and got mediocre school yeah, results yeah, which yeah. doesn't really help anyone so I think I that's why we made that decision to oh. focus 100% on music and piano playing. Oh, that's interesting though, because um, you decided to pursue just the music career, the piano career that you pursue, and then you decided, oh, this is this is it for me, and then you're gonna continue that, and then you went on to various concerts in multiple, a lot of places you visit. Is there any particular memory that you have from that that made you think that, oh, oh, this is. I'm having fun. I think that it's, I can't say one experience, but mm -hmm. there's that feeling when you're on stage playing for an audience, when you're sharing music that you love, mm -hmm. um, that feeling of sharing music you love with more people so that they can enjoy that music. That's a really, it's a special thing for me and it's something that I'll always enjoy, I think. Um, and it is, for me, it's an exciting mm -hmm. thing too. I get to travel, I get to see new places, meet new people, and it's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. I have to practice for many hours a day, but 
uh, for me to have this feeling on stage, it, it's all worth it. Mm. Uh, you play uh, contemporary or classical, mostly? I mostly play classical. Sometimes I play some contemporary music as well uh, for fun. Uh, but sort of the main body of my music is classical, Western classical music. Uh, do you have like a favorite uh, composer or...? Oh. I like lots of composers. I like... Uh, I think Beethoven's a very popular composer. I like his music very much, but I think... Can you introduce uh, me to one song from Beethoven? Is there any particular piece from Beethoven that you like? A famous, a famous one that everyone knows. Uh, I think there's so many pieces that everyone... I mean, like, mm. every, everyone, you know... Yeah. Yeah, so the yeah. Everyone knows this. I think there's so much... <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think... Uh, I think he's one of the, he's probably the most quoted composer. Mm. He's a composer that everyone knows his music. Even yeah, if they true. don't know that they know his music, they know his yeah, music. That's true. Like that. So, um, but I love rom like romantic music, like Liszt and Chopin. This is Tchaikovsky my, is yeah, also. Tchaikovsky, yeah. Russian romantic music yeah. is really uh, some of my favorite. Uh, Russian romantic music. Are I there love any as well. examples that you can play? From. Uh, a particular one that you usually yes. like when you play when you put your hand on idol what kind of piece that you usually play just hovering over the on hmm. I, there's lots of pieces i play uh there's uh a piece by there's a piece by chopin mm. uh that i love i, I don't actually don't play much chopin mm. uh but my favorite is his there's a nocturne in c minor which is mm. Sort of dark yes. music, very it's dark, a very and then moody and then in the middle section is this this light, yeah. uh, ha not happy, it's feathery. Right? It's sort of in a major key now, yeah. so it's less dark, and then it builds up. on building up until we get to you. I haven't played this piece in like two years, so it's very but bad. That's really good. Uh, it kind of, there's, there's, yeah. yeah I, there's, I like. I don't play much of Chopin's music, which is why I can't really play this piece. Uh, I think uh, there's a piece I'm playing by Schumann, which I really like at the moment, which is Widmung, mm -hmm. uh, which means uh, dedication. Uh, and Schumann wrote it for his uh, wife, Clara Schumann, mm -hmm. uh, who he loved very much. Uh, Schumann died uh, quite young. Mm -hmm. uh, he went completely mad because oh, uh, he had syphilis and that uh, means your brain, it's not very good for your brain, you go a bit crazy in the end. But this is a piece he wrote for his wife and he loved her very much. Ooh, maybe.
kembali lagi saudara bersama saya Alivia Malik dan juga George Harliono di Sapa Indonesia Pagi akhir pekan. Kita akan ngobrol dengan George Harliono terkait konser amal yang akan dia selenggarakan di tanggal 26 November. Nah, George, you gonna have a concert on the 26 November of November, I assume. Please tell me about this charity concert. So I'm very excited to be playing in Jakarta again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to be playing at the Aula Sinfonia uh, Jakarta. It's a wonderful concert hall, and I'm going to be playing Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto Number no. One. Uh, it's a very special concert for me uh, because we're raising money for um, Yayasan Kanker Anak Indonesia, yeah. uh, which is a wonderful charity which supports uh, children with cancer, mm-hmm. and their goal is to build the first hospice um, for uh, children with cancer. And I think it's a really special cause and I think it's um, it's really nice for me to support a cause which is um, which is to support the people of my mother's home country I think yeah. it's very special for me and that's why um, I'm I'm really looking forward to looking forward to this performance why this particular uh, uh, charity that you're pursuing I think um, I mean I've in music and in uh, in what I want to do in the future, I've always, education has always been really important to me and supporting the next generation of musicians and um, giving children opportunities uh, to study music, to, to give them the opportunity to take part in the thing that has improved and given me so much to enjoy in life. Um, And so, a children's charity for uh, for children with cancer is, I think, the perfect um, perfect organization to do this concert with. Yeah, because you, we, uh, I've received information that you said that uh, the education for children, especially music, is often overlooked. Yeah, say. I'm in my experience. Of course, everyone has different experiences, um, but growing up, I feel that. In where I'm from, that uh, in the UK, we didn't music isn't taken as seriously in schools as other subjects. Uh, sports is often seen as much more important than music, and I, I think it's a shame because music is so important. It can teach so many skills. It's really good for communication, for teamwork. It can really help with uh, areas like uh, academic subjects like maths. And so I, um, I mean, I was always like one of the top of my class in maths. Mm. I think because I played music, it helped so much with my academics. Mm. Um, so I think it's a really important part of education, and I really want to do more to introduce more people to play music, to give young people the opportunities that um, I that I was able to have because I come from a place where my parents could afford to give me mm. piano lessons. I understand that this is not the case with everyone, and so mm. if I can do something to support the next generation, that's uh, I think it's my responsibility. It's what I really want to do. Mm. There are some uh, statements that you've said that kind of interest me because you said that you have the privilege to learn piano from your parents, um, and then you study classical music. And there are certain image that classical music portrays that it's not for uh, a lot of people. How do you make it more relatable to young viewers to I think, classical? Um, in the problem in the UK is that piano lessons are very expensive uh, for me growing up. I understand not everyone can afford to pay the weekly fee to piano teachers. And it's actually, in some kind, it can be quite high. It's, piano lessons are not cheap. Um, and I think classical music is often seen as something elite and something not for young people. Mm. Um, I think this is wrong, though. I think that classical music is for everyone. I mean, everyone listens to classical music, whether they know it or not. You mm-hmm. hear it in TV shows, you hear it in the street, you hear it in elevators, you hear it in, yeah. in ringtones. Yeah. I mean, you hear it everywhere. So there's always classical music everywhere. And I think that uh, um, actually one thing I really like when I perform in Indonesia is when I do perform here, the, mostly the audiences are very young. Mm-hmm. Uh, the average age is probably like between 25 and 35 when I mm. perform here in Jakarta, um, which is is much more interesting for mm. me, much more exciting uh, to perform for people my age. Uh. Um, and yeah, I think that classical music it has 
it has the potential mm. to be more popular among young people. I think mm. it's all about the personalities, having yeah. young, interesting people play classical music. And this is why I think it's really important to encourage more children to, to participate so that we can uh, make it a more inclusive activity for everyone. Yeah, I absolutely agree because you see it's, um, uh, how do you say, because classical music is mainly for upper class. There's this sort of that class just terminology that goes along with it, it can be very uh, isolating sometimes, uh, uh, not being able to um, even watch uh, people play classical music because it's not for uh, the people who can afford, how you say, in yeah. Indonesia. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think with all, with when I do concerts, I always try and make sure um, this concert is slightly different because we're raising money for children mm -hmm. with cancer. But usually when I perform, I try to make sure the tickets are affordable. And usually I would, I like to give reductions to yeah. students and children. That's what I always aim to do. Um, but I think that the more young, interesting people we have performing classical music, that will increase the amount of interest there is among young people. Um, so once we have these role models, I think that's where we should start. Do Indonesian fans really like clamoring or how does it how, usually? Ah, uh, it's... Um, Indonesian fans are... In the concerts, they're mm. very well... Very, when I'm playing, they're very mm. respectful. It's really nice. They're like any... Uh, like, they're listening to the music. You can tell that they're listening and taking in the music. Um, Afterwards, they're always very enthusiastic and very. Uh, they always want to, to say hello. And I, one thing I always try to do is I like to speak with my audience. I like to say hello to everyone, because I feel that if they've taken the time to come to my concert, I should try and take the time to take photos, to say hello to people, to meet with people. Um, this is very important to me. Okay, I'm carrying you back to the charity that you're going to do the charity concert. So, do you have any hopes or, or any? Final thoughts for the concerts, the charity concerts that you're going to do on the 26th of November? Yeah, I just, um, I'm very happy to be doing this concert. It's, uh, it's not often where I get to give a concert for such a good cause. And to do it in Indonesia, my mother's home country, is, uh, it's a big honor for me. So I'm really looking forward to it. Do, do classical music often improvise? Do they do that? Oh, classical musicians. Some classical musicians are very good at improvising. Um, if you go back uh, 150 years, every classical musician knew how to improvise. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe a bit longer than 150 years. Um, uh, today, classical musicians don't improvise so much. Okay. I can improvise a little bit, but I am not the most talented improviser, unfortunately. Really? Uh, but uh, jazz, I, I admire musicians, mm -hmm. like jazz musicians who can walk into a concert not knowing exactly the music they're going yeah, to play. Yeah, because they often fantastic. do that sometimes, that's very interesting. But I think with, uh, I, at the moment I love classical music because I have the, the score in front of me. I know the notes I'm going to play, but then within that framework of the notes I'm going to play, I'm free to express what I want to do with me. I, every concert is different. I do something different with the music mm. every time, even if it's the same notes, the same rhythm. There's always a different feeling, a different interpretation, mm. a different emotion. And I think that's what makes classical music so interesting to me is that it's the same music, but it's never the same. It's always different on, depending on the performer, the venue, the piano. Mm, that's true. It's always changing. And that's why it's so fascinating to me. Okay. Right. Thank you so much for giving your um, giving your insights and your thoughts on the classical music and also about the Indonesian uh, charity uh, concert that you're going to do on the 26th. Terima kasih sudah menyaksikan Sapa Indonesia akhir pekan. Saya Alivia Nadamalik dan George Harliono pamit. Sampai jumpa.